Hi everyone, so in this video we're going to be taking the circuit that we prototyped in the previous video for the NanoLeaf uh, replica display uh, and designing a PCB for this to go onto that will fit into our uh, lighting unit nice and neatly so we can hide all the electronics from the previous version. So this is the very roughly drawn uh, circuit diagram that we're going to be following. So we've got our D1 Mini. Uh, which is then connected to our quad buffer, um, which then feeds off to the LEDs. And then we've got our little push switch, which obviously allows us to turn the power on and off. Plus also I've just put in there, a, just to remind me, the uh, power socket so that we can actually get everything powered up from our five volt supply. Here is the circuit for the Nano Leaf replica. There isn't a lot to it, but let's start with the D1 Mini here in the middle. Uh, thankfully, KiCad actually has a part for the D1 Mini, which I'm going to call for the Mini from here on, uh, just to save me saying D1. It also becomes less confusing when I start referring to the pins in a minute. So uh, as well as the symbol for it here, we've also got the footprint for PCBs later, um, which is great because it saves me time having to actually model a thing. So to the Mini, we've got the LEDs connected. That's via the non-inverting buffer here. There's a push button and the relay output. Uh, using the compiled, or sorry, the pre-compiled binaries for WLED, these pins are actually hard-coded um, and you need to identify the correct pins. So if we have a quick look at uh, the uh, GitHub wiki for WLED, you can see here the default usage is GPIO pin two is for the LED data, uh, pin zero is button. Uh, also LED clock, but we're not using that, so it'll be the button. Uh, and then relay is GPIO pin 12. Now the thing with that is obviously we can see that there isn't a 12 on here. Um, there's a pin 12 somewhere, which is, I think, yeah, there you are, D3, but it's not referring to that. What it's actually referring to is the ESP. So if we go to uh, Wemos's website, which is the, uh, I'm, my one's a clone of this, but uh, the pinouts the same. So we can see here the ESP actually has these GPIO pins, which is what it's referring to, uh, and they go to the pins actually on the board here. So as we can see from this table, the uh, LED pin is on GPIO 2, which is D4. Uh, GPIO pin 0 uh, is D3, uh, and the relay, which is GPIO 12, is actually D6. So that gives us all of the references we need for that. So looking back at the circuit, uh, we can see here that the push switch is attached to D3, which is the GPIO pin we just identified. Uh, pin four, um, actually, sorry, just to spell you about this, the switch itself is uh, connected to the pin on one side and then connected to ground on the other. That's because this particular pin is uh, activated or it's got its pull-up resistor activated. So what that means is it's being held high so that when you push the button it goes low and that's when the circuit can identify that it's actually been pressed. Um, so this is a sort of an active low I suppose. Um, so pin 4 that's going on to uh, into the uh, non-inverting buffer now, there are four buffers within the chip that we're using. It's a quad buffer. Um, they've all got individual enable pins. Now, these are, again, uh, active lows, so they need to be held to ground in order to activate the buffer itself. So these ones, I've just hardwired this particular one down to uh, ground, meaning it's going to be active the entire time. The data pin comes from the ESP or the mini uh, and then into the buffer and then goes out to the LEDs on the other side. Um, the other thing with this, you've got the three other buffers just down here. Because with this particular chip you don't want to leave any input pins fl uh, floating um, or left unconnected. So with these particular ones uh, I've got all the enable pins are held high so they're going to the 5 volts. That just basically disables all of these buffers. Uh, I've also just a belt and braces it put the data pins down to ground. Um, so that, that way everything is basically, it's in a known state, which means they're less likely to cause data errors uh, on any of the other chips or any of the other gates within it. Um, so after that, we've then got here this resistor uh, and LED uh, array. These are actually connected to the relay output of the WLED. Now, 
The thing to bear in mind with this is that these pins can only output a maximum of 12 milliamps. So that 12 milliamps is being shared between all of these LEDs. Now the point of the LEDs is, uh, as I showed in the previous video, to hopefully mean that the LEDs will come on when the uh, chip is trying to output data to the LEDs, uh, the LED strips. So the idea there is you could have the LED strips at zero brightness, but the thing's still on, so you could be trying to adjust it or press the button on the front and not realize that it's actually trying to turn on, it's just that you set the brightness to nothing. So these will come on when it's trying to send data to the uh, LED strips. So because of that, each of these LEDs can only have a share of the 12 milliamps. So if we do before, between the four of them, that gives us uh, three milliamps per LED. Now it doesn't sound a lot and it really isn't, um, but I'm hoping that this will actually mean it's bright enough. I don't want them to illuminate. I don't want them to be a light source of their own right. Um, what these are is just an indicator to say, look, I'm switched on um, and that's it. So they don't need to be hideously bright. Because we've got three, uh, sorry, four, um, LEDs with three milliamps each. We've got the four resistors. Now I could have probably just had this running through one, um, but in this instance I've gone for the four and one for each of them. So to calculate the resistor needed, we need to look at good old Ohm's law, um, or as most people will probably know it, voltage equals current times resistance. Now we need to know the resistance, so we can rearrange that. So we have uh, resistance equals voltage divided by current. Now the voltage is the supply current. So in this instance, it's 3.3 volts, not the five volts we're running from because the uh, ESP runs at 3.3 volts. So we've got 3.3 volts and then we minus the forward voltage of the LEDs, which for the ones I'm gonna be using is 1.7 volts. We then divide that by the three milliamps or 0 0.003 amps. Um, and that will give us the uh, resistance that we need. So that's 1.6 volts divided by the three milliamps, which means we've got a resistance of 533.333333 recurring. As far as I'm aware, that's not a normal uh, resistance value. So the closest one that I've got is 560 ohms. So it's slightly more. It's always better to go more because it means you're gonna draw even less current out of it um, and you're less likely to damage the ESP does mean these are going to be a little bit dimmer but um, it shouldn't affect it too much and it means that that way we're not drawing too much power out of the uh, ESP. On the other side we've got this little uh, solder jumper that's there just simply because I don't know whether this idea is going to work I wanted to cover my bases so uh, we can solder uh, put a solder jumper across the lower two here so it connect to the relay output or we can connect it to the five volts um, and then these will just stay on constantly as long as there's a five volt supply to it. Then at the very top we've got the barrel jack um, with the protection diode which just takes the power in, shoves it through the protection diode just to make sure that we can't uh, reverse the polarity of it and then pumps it into the five volts. So that's the circuit and let's have a look at the PCB now. So the PCB itself is uh, in a triangular shape that actually fits the gap that's in the existing uh, connection piece for the display. So the nice thing here is what I'm going to end up doing is redesigning that um, part of it so that, that way this will sit inside and then we'll have the button in the middle with the LEDs surrounding it. Now the idea is the uh, button will actually have uh, I'm loath to call it a light pipe because it's going to be 3D printed, which means it's more than likely going to be four splodges of light in the corner on the soft sides of it all, but that's the effect I'm looking for. Um, so they're going to be on one side. So everything in the uh, sort of uh, cyan colour, that's all on the front side, and everything in the magenta is actually on the back side. So having a look at the 3D rendering of this, um, first off, ignore the fact that the uh, button is off centered is because I changed the way of this one being positioned on for the uh, PCB so the actual reference point for this one is in the middle which I'm not sure that anyone will be able to see but there's a little blue uh, cross in the middle because I wanted to be able to position the center of it where I wanted rather than the original one which is actually coming off of one of the uh, pads so I wanted to be able to position it very precisely that way so because of that I didn't change the 
the 3D model of the Switch. So it's actually offset from it, so ignore that. It is obviously going to be in the middle there. Um, we've got four LEDs around it. We've got our solder jumper to the side. And then on the other side, that's where all the rest of the components are. Um, there doesn't seem to be a model for the jack here, so imagine there is. Now the whole thing with this as well is that you can use a, the jack for it. Uh, all the alternative is you could just hardwire straight in, which is why I've actually labelled these two. So um, it's obvious what's going on there. Um, the other thing uh, is the LED output. It's on a header here. So uh, that's not how I'm going to have it. It will be hardwired using one of the connectors that I showed in, uh, I think, the first video of this where I was showing how to connect the uh, LED strips up. So I'll be using the same connector for that. So they'll all be able to interconnect that way um, rather than the method I'm using at the moment. Um, and then just a couple of other bits. We've got the reminder that this is actually set up to be center positive. So again, trying to do my best to make sure that at the very least I remember to wire this up correctly. We've got our protection diode there. I did think, because there's a lot of space left over on this, that we can have the bit of materials just on the side here. Why not? Uh, and then at the top, we've just got some fun bits here. So we've got, so you've designed it with KiCad. I found the KiCad one uh, or the logo for it actually in the uh, uh, footings for the PCB. So I thought put that on there because it is designed for it. Qtone is just my pretend company that I uh, label most of my electronics with because I'm sad. Um, but yeah, that's there. Uh, and then just what it is, a control board for WLED light panel system, um, which is again, just something I made up for it all. Uh, so yeah, that's it really. Um, what we'll have a look at next week is uh, the 3D models that I've been making for the replacement with what this will actually attach to. So we'll go through how, uh, what they all look like and what that's gonna happen with them. Um, I've got the PCBs on order, so hopefully they should turn up within the next sort of week or two. Once they do arrive, um, then we'll look at how to uh, build this all up and we'll just go through the soldering process. Because um, I've not really done a circuit board where there's components on either side. So I'm not quite sure how I'm going to actually do this yet. I'm thinking I'll start this side because um, when you have the switch, the LEDs, although this is rendering them off the board, they will actually be flush with the board. Um, but looking at it this side, they shouldn't be in the way. Um, so hopefully that means I can solder everything on this side, flip it over, and then solder everything on this side. So that hopefully that should all work. Um, at least that's what I'm hoping. I'll you know, wait to see when they actually arrive and I try to solve everything together. Um, and then after that, we'll look at installing this into the light itself once we've got 3D parts printed. And uh, I'll go through how I installed WLED onto the controller as well. Uh, so that's it for this video, and I'll see you next time.